The year is 1944. The US and the Allies are nearing the end of a long, grueling war with the Axis powers. With the development of the atom bomb by the US, this war will since be remembered not only for its tragedies like the Holocaust and the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but also for its large technological strides towards space exploration. The first of these strides included Nazi Germany's use of their own superweapon, the V-2 Intercontinental Missile. Being the first of its kind to leave Earth's atmosphere, the V-2 was invented for the purpose of bombing the English. The man to build such a weapon was Nazi engineer Werner von Braun, a member of the SS and future pioneer of America's NASA program. He began work with the Nazis at the beginning of the war in 1939 and immediately earned a reputation as a lead aerospace engineer in the Nazi ranks. His reputation would soon go south, however, when he was accused of being a communist sympathizer by his colleagues. He was even accused of attempting to sabotage the V2 program. These accusations caused him to flee Germany along with 500 other German scientists to avoid being executed by the Nazis. Concerned about the implications of German technology, America was anxious to gain an edge in the Nazis. Shortly after fleeing to Austria, the United States picked up Werner and his team of 500 scientists in the hopes of grasping an advantage. As they would soon find out, this investment was one that would not only help them win the war, but one that would give them the opportunity to explore the stars. Shortly after World War II, Werner immediately began work as an American citizen. Shortly thereafter, the United States founded the NASA program, hiring Werner as one of its lead engineers. Due to his past expertise with ballistics and flight, Werner's initial task was to create an orbital launch vehicle. In this operation, known as Operation Paperclip, Werner and the others began to develop rockets that would launch not only satellites, but a new era of space exploration. Although the United States had begun working frivolously to finish the launch, in 1957 the Soviet Union launched the world's first ever satellite, the Sputnik. Likewise, the United States responded with their first satellite, the Explorer 1, in 1958. This was the true beginning of the famous space race that continued to rage onward for some time into the 1970s. Although the recent events were quite astonishing, the scientists had little time to rejoice. Instead, they had to focus their minds on a new concept, the moon. Being the first to achieve a lunar flight would certainly be considered a monumental task from either side, and the rival countries both knew so. The important question, however, was, what counted as claiming or getting to the moon first? The USSR Lunar Probe 2 became the first man-made object to reach the moon, crashing into its surface at a high velocity in 1959. However, although it marked the first spacecraft to reach the moon, it still had not completed the country's task of landing on it. Soon scientists brought in the idea of safe landings to other planets. During their efforts to outcompete the United States, the USSR also launched its first human into space with Yuri Gagarin's first flight in 1961, just weeks before the planned launch of the Americans. This was a major success from the USSR, but more was to come the United States' way. Other notable feats during the space race include the first woman in space, the first Mars flyby, and most notably, the first moon landing. Historically, in 1969, Apollo 9 landed safely on the moon with American astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, being the first to set foot and begin their experimentation. This event not only marked an important success for NASA, but also the end of their own endeavors. It wasn't until 1975 that the US and the USSR had finally done their first joint space mission together as allies. This event includes the advancement of space technology with a period of innovation of several Land Rovers, effectively taking remote experimentation to unprecedented heights. This is also very significant due to the information that was exchanged. Both parties received great help on their own endeavors. Although Luna 2, a USSS rover, was launched in 1959, it had finally gained significance when it sent back images of the dark side of the moon. This brought attention towards the ideas of picture evidence being taken from rovers. After many failed attempts in 1970, the USSR had pulled through with their Luna 17 rover that could actually move on wheels. It also carried with it a remote controllable rover known as the Luna Could 1, which collected soil samples for further research of other planets. Meanwhile, the US was developing a new era for space travel and exploration that will revolutionize the space frontier in the 80s. It began with the first space shuttle that could orbit in space, the Columbia. Eight, seven, we have a go for main engine start. Five, four, three, two, 
It was very groundbreaking because it utilised reusing parts that were used in takeoff. The shuttle parts disembark off the ship, fall back to the earth and are reclaimed and used again. The incredible and maybe unfathomable events had been impressing and advancing the space program into the limelight. Although things were going well, mankind encountered a problem that had always been difficult to handle, but had finally been realised by a very tragic event. Let's go down to the Kennedy Space Center and take a look at Challenger sitting on the pad. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, we have main engine start, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and... It in 1986, a space shuttle named the Challenger, which was carrying a school teacher, had exploded after a launch due to a breach in the pressurized gas that rushed from the motor. This was a very grim incident for NASA and space travel as a whole. The issue is that this problem had been around for a very long time, but as they say, it takes a crisis to make a change. This morning, it looked as though they were not going to be able to get off. One minute, 15 seconds, velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Launch failures had been around since the very beginning, costing an expensive price to keep supplying NASA to make these things that may not have even worked. The issue was that, how can we prevent these things from happening to our astronauts? And it was also, how can we gain back support by showing the safety and care for the spacecrafts? This was taken into careful consideration when in the same year when the weather satellite oh, goes g was shocked by lightning, and it caused the first engine to shut down entirely to prevent it from climbing too high. Down. It then bombarded the civilians below. NASA had created a remote to destroy so its debris radius would be much smaller. Meanwhile, in the rover and probe creation and studies, they had been exploring very far and procuring images down. from the moon all the way to Pluto from the 1950s to 1980s. They too had had the same problems or failures in the past, and so NASA's most ambitious rover project had landed safely on Mars in 1997. Many probes and rovers had failed to land safely onto planets and had a stronger tendency to crash land onto them, so the Mars Pathfinder utilised a new and innovative technology for landing safely. This parachute technology formed a large ball around the rover, keeping it safe from the impact damage that might have happened. Not only was this one of the safest rovers, it was also the most advanced rover of them all. Exploring the planet and showing the world the conditions and substances of Mars, these conditions paved the way for multiple new ideas from all nations that still share their innovations into the same cause, space exploration. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. Throughout history, mankind's struggle and need to advance and explore has always been a factor in many of the events in our world's history. As humans, we may encounter either troubling problems or new thoughts on mankind's many concepts, but we always find a way to get past them. Finally, as humans, when one of us experiences a pulse through an idea, is exchanged and reproduced even better than it was before. These ideals replicate the events and ideas of Earth's space exploration as it progressed immensely through time. It truly represents what humans have the ability to endure and create. The next question is, what is left for us to do? With the many new crafts and projects coming our way, the possibilities are endless. We'll serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too.